Here he was surrounded by the constant dripping of water, which would inspire his great invention. Tosibius knew that for thousands of years the Egyptians had used ordinary water timers to mark the hours of the day. The famous Karnak water clock is one example. Despite the intricate hieroglyphics, strange symbols and images of gods and animals, it's a simple device, as this reproduction shows. It was filled to the top with water, and as it drained out through a spout at the bottom, the time could be read as the level dropped. Markings inside showed the passing hours, but these varied as the number of hours from sunrise to sunset varied from month to month. The clock allowed the ancient Egyptians to measure the passing of time during the day or night but this was still only a timer, not a constant clock. In sophisticated ancient Greek society, the ability to tell the time accurately had become extremely important. Their society needed order and schedules, which meant they had to be able to tell the time accurately. Sundials could be used at certain times and can be seen on important surviving municipal buildings such as the Tower of the Winds in Athens. But when the sun went behind a cloud or night fell, how would they know what time it was then? The first Greek solution to this age-old dilemma was their own water timer called a clepsydra or water thief. The clepsydra was a very elegant device for measuring periods of time. You might, for example, want to give equal amounts of time to lawyers in a courtroom or speakers in a political assembly. It worked very simply. You filled a large vessel with water, and when you were ready to start timing, you simply took the bung out of the bottom, and the water ran slowly out of the vessel. Lawyers in minor legal cases may have been allowed the time it takes one clepsydra to empty to give their arguments. However, for a serious case like a murder, a whole row may have been needed to allow more time for evidence. But when all the water was gone, your time was up. It's the origin of the phrase, running out of time, as that is quite literally what happened. For breaks or overnight, however, a bung could be put in, effectively pausing the session. The clepsydra had one significant limitation. It's a timer, not a clock. The problem is that when the vessel is full, the water gushes out the bottom. But as the water level drops, so the pressure reduces, finally to a dribble. The ancient Greeks made their clepsydra more and more ornate, but they still had the same problem. The fact the water ran more quickly at the beginning than at the end. They created graduated scales to compensate for this, but they could not make them run at a constant speed. Tisibius, however, saw the solution. He realized that if the vessel was always full, then the water pressure out would always be the same. If he could master that, he knew he could create an accurate device which would change the world. This then was the challenge he decided to set himself. Eusebius saw that the way to simplify the Egyptian clepsydra was not to utilize outflow of water, but to try and obtain a uniform inflow of water. Dr. Alan Mills, a research fellow from the University of Leicester, has used classical references to Tisibius's work to build a replica of one of his earliest water clocks. It's very sophisticated. It's one of these inventions that's easy once some genius has thought of it. The challenge was to keep the reservoir of the clepsydra full at all times. And this is how Tisibius did it, 
Firstly, he added another water tank above the main reservoir. This poured water into the top faster than it could flow out, meaning the reservoir was always full. And any excess water could just run off into an overflow container. The water would always come out of the reservoir at the same speed. Now Tisibius just had to measure it. To do this, he decided to put another water tank under the constant outflow. In this container, he placed a float with a pointer on top and a scale next to it. When the level of the water rose, the pointer rose at a constant speed. It was a stroke of genius. Tisibius had created the world's first mechanical clock, thanks to the dripping water in a barber's shop. He had harnessed the power of water and, in the process, he had become the master of time. But measuring hours and minutes was only the start. What else could this unique water clock do? The answer to that was kept here in the great library of Alexandria. Anyone in the ancient world wanting to understand time could come here and read Tisibius's books, which described the wonderful machines he was now building and the whole new subject he had invented, hydraulics. Before long, his clocks were not just dripping taps, but ornate machines decorated with gilded figures of gods and animals. And their workings were yet more elaborate too. He devised a complex scale for the hours, shown here in white for the day and blue for the night. One cherub holds a vase from which drips the constant supply of water. Whilst another travels up the scale, holding the pointer that indicates the hour of the day or night. But that was only the start. to sound a whistle and make a model owl move. He had invented the world's first cuckoo clock. The increasingly complicated series of gear wheels also allowed the scale to rotate very slowly to indicate the days within each month of the year. This clock was also now a calendar. An automatic, day and night, month and year, cuckoo clock. Archimedes was clearly fascinated by Tisibius's creations. He studied his clocks and used his own genius for invention to continue the work. In an Arabic translation of Archimedes' work, dating back over a thousand years, we can see a tantalizing glimpse of his additions to a Tisibius water clock. This modern reconstruction shows Archimedes' elaborations to the Tisibius clock. He added a bird who dropped small stones onto a bell, making the clock chime on the hour. The woman is a gorgon with snakes for hair. When the bell chimes, you look up to see her eyes change color, indicating the time. This is the first automated chiming clock in history. One can only imagine the spectacle when Archimedes unveiled his daring design. In Greek mythology, anyone who looked into the eyes of the Gorgon would be turned to stone. But with Tisibius' help, 
Archimedes could be the man who dared to look into the face of the Gorgon. Alexandria today is a busy modern port. A new building now stands in place of the famous library. Tragically, the original library was burnt to the ground and with it was lost nearly all the knowledge of the ancient world. Only a very few ancient texts remain which mention Tisibius's work. We may never know what else he invented as not one single page of his own work survives. So much information has been lost that Tisibius has been largely forgotten. However, there is one legacy of his work, one clue, which is still standing. This unassuming tower, tucked away in a corner of Athens, is one of the best preserved buildings from antiquity. Its survival, almost untouched, is a miracle, and one due to the fact that for centuries it was believed to be the tomb of the philosophers Socrates and Plato. But this isn't a tomb. Carved on its eight faces are clues to its real use. On each side a worn sculpture of each of the eight winds can still be seen, along with a sundial. It was actually built by an astronomer around 200 years after the death of Tisibius, but is a monument to his genius. This building, now known as the Tower of the Winds, was the public clock of ancient Athens. Inside this tower, there once stood a huge and complex water clock based on a Tisibius design. This clock was fed by a constant stream of water which ran from a spring on the Acropolis from which the whole population of Athens could tell the time. But this was more than just a clock or a calendar. Some believe this strange building housed a device that even charted the movements of the sun and moon in relation to the constellations of the zodiac. We know the Greeks were measuring hours, days and months during the time of Tisibius. Could it be that they had also started to look above and measure the heavens? One man believed the answer may lie in the cogs and wheels of the Antikythera mechanism. In 1951, an English physicist, Derek de Sola Price, decided to find out for himself and examine the mechanism in detail for the first time. De Sola Price travelled to Athens to look at the mechanism. The pieces had lain largely untouched since its discovery 50 years earlier. The device had disintegrated further, exposing pieces of the gears which he was able to study. He became determined to crack the secrets of the Antikythera mechanism. De Sala Price spent much of his time at the National Museum of Greece in Athens, probing the secrets of this ancient enigma. Something told him that these fragments were the real treasure from the Antikythera wreck. Using new developments in X-ray technology, he could now see what its discoverers 50 years before could not. Looking through the corrosion, he was amazed. A machine so complex it could almost be modern. He had to know what it was for. His meticulous studies of the cogs, gear ratios and inscriptions gave him clues to the possible purpose of the mechanism. <laughs> 